Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha. In this video, I'll be talking about the embellishment of slavery and how long it existed. Because something isn't quite right. They claim that slavery began in 1619, cited in the story of the white lion transporting 20 enslaved Africans to the British colony of Jamestown, Virginia. However, upon reviewing that story, something doesn't add up. Let's explore. Please know that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. As we know, Slavery has been around for many centuries, but it wasn't designated to a specific color or race. For many centuries, it was the Africans and Negroes who enslaved the people. What most people should know is of the Moors, however. The Moors were Negroes, black, colored, and they ran Spain for 800 plus years. But no one, not anyone, could tell you where they ended up after the bloody fight in 1491, titled Thanksgiving Celebrates the Fall of Subjugation. Yes, it's the real reason why we celebrate Thanksgiving. Now to cover up the Negro existence history, they lied and made up some Indian story. This was almost 130 years before the white lion brought enslaved people to Jamestown, Virginia. I understand that this is based on some alleged document evidence from John Rolfe. So the whole white lion story, again, was based on some alleged documented evidence from some gentleman named John Rolfe. Now here's where it gets tricky after I investigated it. England, Fran England and France and India were dominated and ruled by black slash Negro people for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years. There wasn't some former British Caucasian farmer named John Rolfe growing some freaking tobacco and later marrying a nearby town native American Indian town's daughter called Pocahontas. And this was embraced by all the Negroes and Indians. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, I can't believe this. Why? Because many Caucasians didn't learn how to bathe until many years later. Oh, and King James. Yeah, King James, King Charles, his descendants and so on were all Negro slash black. Meaning they want us to believe that these Negro people accepted, because this is what, what was written, that they accepted a union of this beautiful Pocahontas at the time to marry, at the time, some stinky, no offense, British Caucasian, because John Rolfe was alleged from England, British Caucasian farmer. <laughs> I'm sorry, it does not make sense. Take a look at this. And Romans, the Egyptians were Africans, and when you get depictions of Egyptians, they're always shown people with black skin, afro hair, um, sort of small um, noses, broad faces, um, full mouths. So they, they actually sort of have a caricature almost um, of what they see as an Egyptian. And the Greeks often confused Egypt with Ethiopia, so they'll quite often call the Egyptians Ethiopians. Well, the emperor of Ghana we know lived in a castle with glass windows. We know this because there's an 1153 AD document that tells us that there were glass windows. We've got uh, Keno uh, in parts of Nigeria. We've got the great Chad Basin civilizations. We got civilizations along the Congo that we don't even talk about. And what, what's ironic, in the 1700s, and you can actually go online and find some of them, the Europeans who go to the Congo come back home and draw pictures, which is in their museums, of these magnificent metropolis, these cities with streets laid out in grids and paved. They found the same thing in Benin, they found the same thing in Kamasi. But these same Europeans, especially the British and the French, will burn and sack most of these cities. After we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors. M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. Dr. Ben said we were calling ourselves Moors. M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. 
Many people are familiar with M-O-O-R, but not M-A-U-R. If we go to the Hieroglyphics Dictionary by E.A. Wallace Budge, we find that the word more, M-A-U-R, is in the book. The meaning is stated as Palermo Stele, the title of the High Priest of Anu. So first off, more, M-A-U-R, was on the walls of ancient Hikupta, a.k.a. ancient Kemet slash ancient Egypt. Second, if we do some research, we find out that more literally to, to means black interchangeable with the term black because it was basically the same thing. But when the slave trade started, they tried to objectify um, black people, Moorish people. So they would use the term interchangeably and they would just switch on to calling people black. But if you look at a lot of old documents, there's even sh slave ships called Blackamore. If you look at slave records, there was even a boxer out of Virginia who was very popular in the early 1800s named Tom Molyneux. And his nickname was The Moor. So that name was definitely used interchangeably with black or Negro at that time. Moor means black. Like Negro, Ethiopian. Moor means black. Moor is not a people. Moor is a color that they have taken this word more and they have associated more with Muslim. There were Moors that weren't Muslim. More means black. There were Christian Moors. There were Moors that, that practiced a traditional African faith system. So that more means black, simple. When the Moors went into Europe, they changed the uh, appearance of the population. Do you see? So you have Italians, Spaniards being darker than the Scandinavians. A Scandinavian person told me that they never considered the Italians or Jewish people to be white. Do you see? Because the lighter people are further north. When I went to Europe, I would always look at pictures and I would always see a moor and sometimes I would see like a skull and bones. And many of the moors would have a skull and bones flag. That's what pirates are known for. There were many Moorish pirates. There was even a Barbary War where they were, um, the U.S. was fighting Moorish pirates up in North Africa and the Barbary Coast. And there's even a secret organization called the Skull and Bones. And we know that masonry comes from Moorish science. So there's always a connection there with the Moors. And it's important that as we begin to develop an understanding of this society that it, it's not Freemason as we know it. And that the Moors brought in this knowledge into Europe. Africans brought this knowledge into Europe. And in bringing this knowledge into Europe, the Knights Templars and other organizations were born out of this. And peoples of European descent were exposed to alchemy, okay? The periodic table of elements, the laboratory, how to take information, how to take elements and atoms and to begin to manipulate them to make them into different types of molecules. The basic one is hydrogen, two hydrogen is helium, three hydrogen is lithium, six is carbon, eight is oxygen. So you, so, so you have this alchemy that's going to come and they're going to be... So as they set up the corporation and brand you as Negro, Black, Colored, Puerto Rican, Indian, African American, and get you to agree to it, right? Once they get you to agree to it, then you become non-human, non-descendable. Y'all know that it's an international courts, right? Understand how this work. In order to be recognized on an international level, you must have a nationality. This is why the Korean, the Chinese, the fake Arab who come over here, look at you and treat you the way they do because they know that you don't know your true history, your true inheritance, who you really are. They're on your land selling you stuff for triple the price, right? And talking bad about you, right? Calling you Aswad, which means black, right? This is a game that is being perpetuated nonstop, day and night. And they hire uh, reverends people who call themselves reverends and bishops, right? And black leaders to perpetuate the word black to make you agree to it, right? 
See, I know y'all saying, damn, young Ella, you got a tape called Clouds Predict the Rise of the Black Messiah. This tape is done in a way to attract a certain being so I can get them on the truth. And in the streets, like I say, we got to be smart with this thing. In the streets, we black. This is how we unite, right? In the streets, we black. But on records in international court, we Moors that were kidnapped, murdered, and lynched. We were not slaves. Slaves are from Russia. This is how we get paid, man. You understand what I'm saying? So in the streets, amongst one another in privacy, we can be black as far as the dominancy, the nobleness, or as far as the, the soul power, if you want to refer to that as such. But in on international courts and documents, right, that it can be legitimately, that, it, that are legitimate in law and how we get paid, right? We are Moors, man. They have a parade every year in January in Spain and in the United States to mark you, to mark the fall of you. Europeans paint their face black and wear your feds to make fun of you. Man, understand what the game is all about. They do plays and reenactment to show how you fell and how you once ruled and how you were still asleep. They put out movies like Black Knight, what they call Martin Lawrence, all through the movie, more. Don't believe me. Go check out the movie Black Knights with Martin Lawrence. If you're looking at this picture over here, if you see pictures like this, drawings, sketches, you might see the king probably wear some pennants like this. If they have head wraps, and the hair a little curly. Although now they whitewashed it and made it look kind of European, but that's not true. These are the original heads of Moors and they were black. They just whitewashed them a lot. Moral pendulants. These are all celebratory of the Moors. They just whitewashed a lot of them. So when you see those things and you see white people on it, but they have hair wraps and things and the hair a little curly, but they, lighten the skin and make them look European, that's fake. Oh, fake. These are Moors. They rule Spain. They actually rule Spain more than 100 years, but that's far as the records they can find. Moors, black people have been ruling the world for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And that's a fact. Until those um, fools got loose from those mountains, the Caucasus Mountains. Yeah, that's when the ruling stopped, and if you notice, a lot of villages nearby, they knew that eventually, after those white people were created in those mountains, they knew eventually it was gonna come on those mountains and scavenge their lands. So they prepared to leave their mark everywhere to make sure future generations know who they were. That's why they left all the carvings and their evidence and books and scrolls. Of course, they got burnt up in the Library of Alexandria, but they tried to leave their mark and evidence everywhere. They knew that they were going to be destroyed. That's why most of their villages and stuff looks literally abandoned. They literally look
with this back information. When did slavery start? Because legitimate records weren't until the 1800s because any time between the 1600s and 1800s, the world was predominantly dominated by Negro slash blacks, despite what they say in the history books. I can say that wars were everywhere at the time. They needed to wipe off Negroes off the planet, including here in America. I mean, it was in full throttle at the time. They have already destroyed most of the black slash African leaders back in Africa at that time. I mean, think about the treachery lies of our history, despite the evidence and genetic habits, lifestyle and traits that we all still carry and practice today. I mean, the whitewashing pretty much started at the same time. Take a look at this. So there's a big online debate on the race of the ancient Egyptians and whether or not the Afrocentrics are over racializing their identity. And my question is, even if that were true, were they the first to play the race card with ancient Egypt? The short answer is hell no. Nah. Think about the time period. The field of Egyptology is said to have been started around 1798. What was happening in the world at that time? The transatlantic slave trade was in high gear and had no signs of stopping. Most of the founding fathers were still alive and we were 60 years out from the American Civil War. So it's safe to say that the founders of Egyptology might have been a little bit racist. Centuries before the Afrocentrics, there were the Eurocentrics and they set the tone for how we view ancient Egypt until this day. So the Afrocentrics get mocked with the we was Kangs trope, but the ones who might deserve their mockery could be the Eurocentrics. Enter the first race card played by Sir William Flinders Petrie, who directly proposed the dynastic race theory to put white folks right in the middle of the history of ancient Egyptians. Then you got Samuel Morton, who really believed in that phrenology thing where looking at black folks' skulls, they tried to say we were closer to monkeys. So it's no surprise that when Morton found a bunch of African skulls in the Egyptian burial sites, he said, Negroes were numerous in Egypt, but the social position in ancient times was the same that it is now, that of servants and slaves. And then you got George Glidden, who just said the quiet part out loud. He said, I am hostile to the opinion of the African origin of the Egyptians. At any rate, they are not and never were Africans, still less Negroes. And I see that hostility in a lot of y'all today. These folks were so racist, they literally tried to say that Nubia was white. <clears throat> Nubia. Nubia. German Egyptologist Carl Richard Lepsius has tried to say that when the Ethiopians were referred to by the Greeks, they weren't talking about Negroes and that Nubia was built by a quote, dark Caucasian race. Maybe, just maybe, the propaganda from the Eurocentrics made the Afrocentrics necessary because after two centuries of propaganda around ancient Egypt, I'm more fascinated about what I wasn't shown about it. See, most of the books that I was shown about ancient Egypt when I was a kid had artwork from the latter periods of ancient Egypt where they were lighter skinned and their features weren't as necessarily classically African. But when you go to the museums, you see a whole different kind of artwork. Even brothers with afros, like, 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 how do they hide this guy? I wasn't told that like Greek contemporaries of dynastic Egypt before they were conquered, like Herodotus, for example, described the ancient Egyptians as black skinned folks with woolly hair, and that latter accounts of the Egyptians were given after they had been mixed and conquered. Speaking of being mixed and conquered, I had no idea about the Rashidun Caliphate, which conquered Egypt in 639 AD, bringing the modern Arabs into the land. He says before that, the Egyptians had been conquered by the Byzantines and the Assyrians and the Persians and the Romans and the Greeks and all of those folks left their footprints since dynastic Egypt. All of this changed the face of Egypt. And speaking of faces, nobody told me that the face hieroglyph in ancient Egyptian looked like Mahershala Ali. And speaking of hieroglyphs, one of the most African things about the ancient Egyptians was the writing system itself. I mean, if the founding culture of the ancient Egyptians came in from Eurasia, where are the Eurasian animals? You got crocodiles, baboons, cobras, lions, ibis birds. You got hippopotamus. These are African animals. I mean, if an animal-based writing system came in from Eurasia, where are the tigers? Where are the bears? Where are the lynxes and the deers and the foxes and all of the other fauna that you see throughout the giant Eurasian continent? These animals had territories much wider than they have today. Yet the animals in the Medunacher hieroglyphic writing system of Egypt are all found in Africa. What about the DNA of the mummies? Well, I'll give you a case of two 
mummy DNA studies. The first study is from the Max Planck Institute published in 2017 on the mummies found in the Fayum Oasis. Over a thousand year period, these mummies had more genetic similarity with folks from Western Asia and in Europe than anybody in Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, Fayum attracted the attention of Egyptologists because it's got these modernistic portraits of ancient Egyptians and they look overwhelmingly Mediterranean. But not so fast. Any true Egyptologist will tell you that the Fayum Oasis had been a hub for Greek immigration into Egypt way into the dynastic period. In other words, it had been the widest part of Egypt for centuries, and the mummies reflected that. Not only that, but most of the mummies found there were of commoners. But what about the royalty? Enter the second genetic study. In 2013, another DNA study was published on the Amarna period of the ancient Egyptian royal family, which includes the 18th dynasty, King Tut, Akhenaten, Queen Ta'i, and what they found was a little different. Now, according to the autosomal DNA test of the Amarna mummies, their closest living relatives are in Uganda. The Ugandans are the closest relations to the dynastic Egyptian rulers. Second to that was East Africans, and third to that, even before we got to the little bit of blood they had from the Arabic world, were West Africans. This is where things get interesting, because Ramses the Great, the big dog of all pharaohs, his Y chromosome is a part of the E1B1A haplogroup, which is known as the African haplogroup. This implication means that not only he, but his ancestors were all of the black African haplogroup. But it gets even crazier. There was evidence that some of Ramses the Great's direct descendants immigrated to West Africa after Egypt fell. And we only know that because his DNA was found in a black American man. Business owner Dexter Caffey had his DNA tested and it turns out that his Y chromosome, his daddy's 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 daddy, leads right back to King Ramses himself. Listen, with all that, folks still might want to debate, and my page is open for that, so please comment respectfully, but I'll leave you with it. Not all the white men who first rediscovered the ancient Egyptian civilization in the 1700s were racist and biased. But for me, the most telling thing is the quote from Count Constantine de Valny. After visiting Egypt in 1787, he wrote, Just think that this race of black men, today our slave and the object of our scorn, is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. So maybe we was Kangs after all. Let's talk about Christopher Columbus, who was set to sail in India, following sails from the Jews from Spain. Yes, the true Israelites. Now this was back in 1492. Have you ever seen the map and noticed how close Spain is to England and Africa? So it wouldn't have been hard for any Moors to escape to Africa or Londa in the 1500s. And they ruled and continued to rule for many years into the 1700s, which is recorded when they started whitewashing most of African slash Negro, Negro and African history. They even whitewashed and erased the Negro presidents before George Washington and just begun at George Washington. I mean, if they were Caucasian, why hide and not share it? Think about that. So you see, the whitewashing has not stopped and will continue until someone stops it. Would you be that special someone? So can we say that the time of slavery and the duration of slavery was definitely embellished? Think about it. There's hardly any physical evidence of these ships and contraptions they use aside from the massive museums in honor and representation of this dark, bloody, enslaved history. But most of the artifacts there are fake, which further validates everything that I just said. To be continued. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post my videos. Love you all. See you all later. Bye.